If anybody in this hall opened a dictionary and looked up the word sad, they'd probably come across the definition feeling unhappy. But over the past few years in my life, I came to learn of another definition for sad. I came to learn that sadness is not only a feeling per se, but rather a very powerful form of energy. Some six years ago, when I was completing my bachelor's degree in architecture, I was approached one morning in university by a colleague who asked me to help her uh, with the design project that she was doing. She wanted some advice. Of course, I said uh, yes, and uh, confidently started saying things like, perhaps you can move this door to this side of the room, perhaps you could increase this area and decrease this area. And as we bounced back ideas, one of my professors walks into the design studio. He hears the conversation that's going on between us and comes up to the girl and in a very condescending tone tells her, don't take advice from this guy. If this guy knew any good, he would benefit himself. The amount of embarrassment and anger that I felt at that moment was tremendous. But of course, out of courtesy, I decided not to reply back to the professor's comment. However, what I did do was turn to the girl and in a very low voice tell her, one day, one day, this professor will realize that he was awfully mistaken. Of course, I was left very upset from that experience. Days passed, weeks passed, months passed, years passed. I graduated from university, began my uh, career in business, and six years later today, I found myself as the CEO of one of the largest property developers in Dubai with an invo investment portfolio uh, of a value of 4 billion dirham. You know, it was only three months ago where I got a phone call from a number which I perhaps didn't recognize. I answered the phone and I heard a familiar voice. Hi, Mohammed, how are you? This is your professor from university. I immediately recognized the voice. It was the same voice that had made me very upset six years ago. I said, hi, professor, how can I help you? He said, Mohammed, uh, I'd like to catch up with you. I told him, by all means, you can visit my office anytime. So the next day, I found myself in my office with the professor sitting in front of me. And he says, I've been seeing the work you've been doing over the past few years, Mohammed. Very impressive work. You've literally changed the skyline of the city with all the towers that you're building. I told him, thank you very much. He said, I'd like to ask for two favors. The first is I'd like to rent an apartment in one of the towers, and uh, I was wondering if you could give me a discount. I said, sure. He said, the other thing I, I, I wanted to propose was, uh, I was wondering how open you are to the idea of me working as a design director within your team. You know, I, I really held the words inside of me. I was holding myself so bad from saying what was inside of me at that moment. I thought to myself, thank you ever so much, sir, for upsetting me. You gave me the energy to prove to myself, to you, to the girl, and to the world what I'm capable of doing. You see, if we study the lives If we study of the, the lives of some of the most successful people on this planet, we'll find one very interesting correlation. Each and every one of them 
in one moment of their life were faced with an experience that made them very upset. Steve Jobs, at the age of 30, was asked by the board of Apple to step down from his managerial position. The company that he formed himself told him to step away because they didn't agree on ideas. How do you think that made Steve Jobs feel? All I know is he came back with energy strong enough to make me and half the people on this planet carry this device. Oprah Winfrey. Did you know that Oprah Winfrey was once fired from her job as a TV presenter? They told her she, she wasn't good enough. How do you think she felt? She came back, made her own TV show, and I'm pretty sure you've all watched Oprah before. Lionel Messi, the football legend. At the age of 11, Lionel Messi was told that he cannot play in the football team, in his football team, because he was too short. How do you think he felt? Now, I, I don't think I, I need to tell you how good Messi is or how much of a legend he is. Michael Jordan, same thing. In college, Michael Jordan was told that he cannot play in the basketball team. How do you think he felt? Almost a decade later, we've got a legend that basketball history had never seen before. Last but by no means least, Thomas Edison. You know, uh, the guy that deserves a, a very big uh, thank you for the light bulbs that allow you to see me in this hall today. Thomas Edison was told by his teachers that he was too stupid to learn anything. How do you think he felt? Being a poet from Arab origins and a lover of poetry, I'd like to wrap up today's talk by a verse of poetry which became a slogan to me in my life. It's written by a poet called Sa'd Alush. He says, and I'll say it in Arabic, الحزن طاقة للدعاء وللطغاة وأنا طلعت من الجروح بفايدة إن لم تزد شيئا على هذه الحياة فتأكد أنك أنت حاجة زايدة. You see, sadness is an energy that can create a villain who seeks vengeance and revenge from those who made them sad. Or it can create a hero. A hero that proves to the world what they're capable of adding to this life. In my case, I chose to show the professor and myself and the world that I can be a hero. And I hope that anyone in this room who faces sadness in their life can use this energy to become a hero. Thank you.